ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lake Sicha and I'm representing Latvian Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, today it's a huge pleasure to see you all here in uh, the Project Latvia 2 uh, webinar, uh, which focuses on the European Union Green Deal and Circular Economy. Uh, the Latvia uh, 2 project is uh, very um, supportive for Ukraine's, Ukrainian small and medium enterprises and business support uh, organizations and the project aims to support your integration into European Union. And we are happy that the project has received support by Ministry of For uh, Foreign Affairs of Latvia, uh, which is uh, co-funding this project uh, and the webinars and the study tours and all the project activities that are included in the project uh, activity list. So, and uh, as I already mentioned today, we have a, uh, today's topic, we have a very um, sustainable, very focused on long-term, uh, long-term vision of the Europe, long-term vision of the world. And uh, I would like to introduce our first speaker of today is um, uh, Alice Vazozo, Head of Life Integrated Project Implementation Division Environment, uh, Environmental Protection Department from Ministry of Environment and Regional Development. And Alice today will speak about solutions for transition to a circular economy, examples from the life waste to resources IP. So Alice, thank you, the floor is yours. Good morning, uh, thank you for the introduction and for giving opportunity to participate today. Uh, before, before I start, I would like to say that we support Ukraine in its uh, fight for freedom and I hope that we will be able also to assist uh, uh, with examples of practice uh, in transitioning to circular economy. Um, I s will start with introduction to this uh, project, a uh, life integrated project, Waste to Resources, and uh, which reflects also solutions to uh, transition to circular economy in Latvia. Um, I will start also with brief introduction of the project so you will understand the context why I'm speaking about these examples. Um, uh, this project was developed to help to reduce waste generation, uh, uh, ensure more efficient waste uh, management and lower the amount of uh, waste to be disposed in landfills. And also what is important is that this project helps to implement also national waste management plan and it corresponds also to this project implementation period. Uh, we started active work two years ago and this project will be uh, implemented by the end of 2028 and cover all territory of Latvia. Um, so our ministry is working together with 22 partners uh, which uh, represent main stakeholders involved in waste management in Latvia. These are state institutions, uh, municipality, waste management associations, uh, waste management companies, educational, non-governmental organizations and university. Uh, so, uh, project is dedicated to addressing several issues Latvia is facing now and uh, particularly waste management and consumer habits. And the uh, ministry with our partners are truly motivated to solve them as much as possible. So the statistic, statistics show that over the last 10 years, uh, waste generated by one Latvian resident has increased more than 100 kilograms. And in 2022, one Latvian resident generated approximately 464 kilograms of waste. Um, in 2022, 44% uh, of the total amount of household waste was disposed in landfills. Uh, so waste disposal in landfills takes up large areas. And while uh, this, the consumption of resources uh, uh, increases every year, uh, it creates everlasting burden also on landfills. Um, Another challenge we face is escalating uh, consumption of plastics. Statistics evidence a significant raise in uh, plastic waste volume in Latvia as well. So uh, uh, plastic consumption in uh, uh, globally has increased more than 20 times uh, since 1950s. And in two years period from uh, 70, 2070 to 2019, uh, in Latvia it increased by 90%. So without a shift in consumption habits 
and to improve the recycling infrastructure, uh, the problem of past plastic pollution will persist and worsen over time. In 2022, in our project, we conducted two surveys uh, which reflect consumer habits uh, regarding purchases of various uh, goods like new clothes and electronics. For example, 76% of respondents said that they buy new clothes every six months. 22% said that they do it more than once a month. Also, electronic goods are bought quite often. Almost every respondent in 2022 said that they bought new electronics last year. Uh, these findings clearly reflect, uh, reflect the habits of today's society, uh, resulting in significant amount of waste. So all before mentioned problems indicate that we are obliged to address these problems. These are interconnected issues. Um, these changes reflect uh, shifts in attitudes, behaviors, uh, policies, also systems to promote uh, more sustainable ways of living and consuming. Uh, the project is focused on implementing several initiatives in Latvia to mo move towards circular economy, uh, reduce the volume of waste generated and disposed in landfills, and also changes in consumer uh, habits and attitudes. Um, in our project, we are implementing three pilot projects. Um, first of the pilot project is experimental pilot plant. Uh, this facility is developed to show waste processing by exploring new innovative uh, options. Uh, at the pilot plant, uh, our partner will ensure testing on the treatment of various mixed waste streams to produce syn gas and vitrified ash. Uh, Syngas, a uh, valuable product of this process, holds potential as a renewable energy source. It can effectively replace natural gas in various applications, uh, offering also sustainable alternatives that reduces our dependence on fossil fuels and mitigates also environmental impact. Uh, moreover, the production of vitrified ash uh, through this waste treatment, the process offers safe and eco-friendly solution for managing residual waste. It's a stable material uh, with reduced environmental risks, contributing also to overall sustainability of waste management policies. Our second uh, project is aimed at transforming uh, non-recyclable plastic waste into valuable new products. Our goal is to harness the potential of non-recyclable plastics and create, uh, create um, economic, economically competitive alternatives. So our partner in this project is uh, exploring the possibilities of turning non-recyclable plastic waste into high quality materials for various applications. Uh, potential products are outdoor terrace boards and material for road construction. And the last of our three pilot projects is aimed at turning wood and textile waste uh, into new product is uh, chip blocks, which are used for uh, uh, wooden uh, pallets. Uh, so through the innovative um, uh, use of recycled wood chips and textile fibers, uh, which is combined with specialized uh, binder, our project partner will develop prototype uh, equipment uh, that can create uh, chip blocks. Um, uh, moving towards uh, another initiatives, we are working um, a new platform has launched this month. It is platform for industrial symbiosis. It is available at synergia.lv, but it's only in Latvian. Um, uh, this platform is designed to foster collaboration and resource optimization for companies. Um, it identifies existing industrial symbiosis cases in Latvia and also engage entrepreneurs in the develop development uh, of new uh, industrial, indus uh, industrial symbiosis cases. Um, this program is specially um, uh, uh, designed uh, w with um, it's a, with an acceleration program. Uh, 
which will provide entrepreneurs with necessary um, support, uh, resources, and uh, mentorship, uh, networking opportunities, uh, and access to funding uh, that aims to empower entrepreneurs to innovate and implement sustainable solutions. Uh, one more uh, initiative we are uh, implementing is mobile application Manaevi Day, or in English it's My Environment, uh, which is set to transform how we apply and pay for transportation services for construction waste, uh, construction debris. Uh, we all know that construction that households also generates quite a big amount of construction debris and uh, it is crucial that we do it effectively. Um, so this uh, mobile application is designed to streamline the entire process uh, to pay for transportation and apply and pay in at once. So ensuring that they pay only for those services which, are, uh, which they require. Um, one more initiative for construction waste management is construction waste sorting and exchange point in Nuamales. Uh, it is uh, dedicated to sorting and uh, processing construction debris into reusable materials. But it is just more than uh, uh, the processing facility, it's also a community hub where residents can actively participate in sustainable practices. It serves also as a location for residents to hand over used goods and find items they need, um, whether it's our construction materials, electronics, tableware and other. Uh, it, it also creates a circular economy where goods are reused, repurposed and reducing waste uh, and minimizing an uh, impact on the environment. Another platform we launched uh, last November uh, is set to revolutionize how we engage in circular economy and it is called Use Again. Um, it combines information on the possibilities of renting, finding a, a repairman, getting used goods for free or for nominal fee. So its aim is to encourage society to engage in circular economy. And one more latest initiative that marks also a significant uh, milestone in journey uh, to circular economy um, is the launch of the first repair center for electronic waste. Uh, it is located in Ruopeji municipality. Uh, this center is dedicated uh, for uh, re repairing electrical and electronic equipment that often is perceived as a waste. Uh, so ru um, residents of Ruopeji municipality and also um, residents from Riga and neighboring municipalities now have access to a uh, reliable and uh, convenient resource for repairing and extending lifespan of used electronic devices. So it also helps to reduce the uh, uh, amount of electronic waste which ends up usually in landfills uh, but also uh, promotes resource conservation and responsible consumption. And by the end of this year it is uh, planned that the repair shop also will open so by now the, the center is just repairing uh, electronic uh, goods but by the end of this year it will be able to also to sell them. Uh, one of the most crucial mm, and critical aspects of our project is also education, awareness raising um, at the heart of our efforts uh, is the implementation of comprehensive, also comprehensive educational campaign on various types of waste uh, like textile, electronics, uh, we have had uh, campaigns for uh, coastal littering and uh, cigarette butts littering. Uh, through these informative campaigns, we aim to raise awareness and also empower uh, individuals uh, at all levels on different waste types. So by educating individuals about environmental impact uh, of waste and the importance of responsible consumption and disposal practices, uh, we strive to promote uh, reuse, recycling and proper disposal of waste. Uh, 
The final slide is our project website. I invite you to visit it because it's also available in English and we try to keep it up to date. Uh, there will be a lot of information what we are do doing apart also from circular economy. And if you are interested in um, a closer cooperation, we are truly open and we can arrange individual meetings with our partners if you are interested in any of my, my uh, topics I said before. Uh, th there will be my contact information. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Alice. Uh, maybe our participants of the webinar have some additional questions. Uh, you can feel free to provide those questions uh, or just uh, turning uh, on the microphone and, and giving a voice. Or you can also write it in this uh, chat field and I can read it and, and, and maybe Alice can give our dear reply. So far, we see that we you are interested because the target audience for this topic is actually very, very good from your side. And uh, yes, feel free to provide some questions if you are. So it looks like at the moment a little bit silence in the group. <laughs> But uh, uh, in this case, uh, I would like to say thank you very much, Alice, for providing this presentation. And uh, we really wish you a good luck uh, for achieving the project goals and also to, to, to bring up uh, the sustainability more and more in, in Latvia. Thank you very much. So, and as the next speaker, uh, step by step, uh, I would like to invite um, an, uh, Eva Sibila Strupula. Uh, she is a CEO and founder of Material Mapper. This is um, a topic will be from waste to value, uh, giving new life to construction materials. So uh, this topic is actually very uh, interesting because when I started to deal with uh, circle economy uh, uh, topic, uh, 2017 something for me the uh, name circular economy was something like understandable what is this why it is where we are what we are and so on and then uh, and then uh, is there was a switch from a circular economy like like uh, like reusing some kind of household things to the construction materials which for me personally was a like like a huge issue how it can be that uh, construction materials could be reused again and and then actually when we start to think about uh, this field and start to think how many actually sometimes in our houses we also are reusing some kind of uh, wallpapers or something I remember my childhood when wallpapers were used for covering the school books, you know. So, so then I started to realize that actually construction materials could be reused and they could be used in different ways. And actually construction materials are for construction, not construction buildings, but general for construction ideas. So uh, thank you, Eva. So the floor is yours. So much. Thank you. Great to be here. And. Um, yeah, uh, well, I'll, I guess I will continue the conversation today about construction waste, uh, which I guess, as we all know, is pretty much the main thing that is polluting our planet today. Um, so if you didn't know that already, then basically almost half of the global waste comes from construction. And um, as many as 10% of the entire uh, CO2 emissions in the world are uh, coming from concrete production. Um, so basically, every single year in Europe, we're generating around 130 billion tons of waste in construction alone. And by 2050, if we plan to be neutral in terms of CO2 emissions, um, there's a very, very long way to go to actually achieve that. Um, now, when we talk about sustainability in construction, um, it might seem a little bit far-fetched uh, looking at all of these numbers, um, but what has been starting to happen in the recent years um, because of the energy crisis that we all have been affected by um, is that sustainability or uh, reuse, basically reusing something that has already been uh, produced, is no longer a question about sustainability and being green. It's a question basically about money savings. So um, all of this combined is basically just show, showcasing the fact that um, we have to start reusing and we have to start reusing at scale. So um, where did this idea come for a material mapper as a platform? 
Um, I basically wanted to uh, see the bigger picture because like when I started researching where uh, in my in my country in Norway where I started the company when I started researching what actually exists out there what kind of solutions do we have uh, what kind of platforms do we have for actually reusing construction waste um, I didn't find much to be honest like I found that there is like a platform in every country in Norway and Sweden um, in uh, Finland, there's there's something everywhere for reusing materials, but not at scale. So basically, um, there's an online marketplace where you can buy and sell materials, but I did not find one solution that would actually look at the core problem and that would allow uh, the industry as such to take tons of materials, to take tons of concrete waste, tons of bricks and take them from one building into another building. Um, so generally, I wanted to understand how can we holistically look at the bigger picture. And that starts with looking at the data. Um, so essentially, what we built was a platform that tells you what, when, and where will be demolished, renovated, and built new. So that we would understand, like, in the context of next seven years, what is going to happen within one country. Um, and then on top of that, we wanted to actually estimate the amounts of the materials that are going to result from this demolition, renovation, or um, new building process to understand like what can we actually get out of the buildings and what, what uh, amounts of these materials can potentially be reused then. Um, so that's what we did with Norway. Uh, on top of that, we created an algorithm that actually estimates the CO2 emissions that would be saved if you, let's say, reuse an X amount, like 10 tons of concrete uh, versus producing new concrete. Uh, so that's what we started with Norway. Um, the platform exists already. It's been live for about almost three years now. Um, and the, the addition to the same platform that we recently came across when approached by one of the leading uh, concrete producers globally um, was that the same platform that estimates the amounts of materials that will res result from, uh, from buildings and that can be uh, then either reused as a part of a city planning uh, procedure where you basically take materials from one building reused in a new project, um, we realized that this can also be used uh, for a different purpose. Uh, and that purpose is being uh, basically reusing bulk of reusables into producing new material. Um, so uh, because of that, we basically built a new database for Finland um, for material or cement producers basically to take uh, reusables and, and uh, use that material as the baseline for creating new cement. Recording in progress. Um, <laughs> okay. uh, so basically, uh, the same platform had a new purpose entirely. Now when we, we found out that uh, the platform can be reused uh, for material production as well. So essentially what we have built in the platform, uh, all, of the, all of the tools combined in this one online platform, um, as I already mentioned, help you find which buildings will be demolished, renovated, and built new. Uh, we also have estimators uh, that are built on top of uh, thousands of data points to estimate the material ca categories and quantity that will result from every single building project. Um, so just to give you a better picture, here is our customer journey and here is actual screens from the platform. So essentially, uh, there are three steps in our customer journey. So first, what you see is the project map um, that basically uh, helps you locate within the city map what you see here, those little pins on the, that's, that's Oslo in this case. Um, so what you see here are different pins that represent uh, projects for demolition, uh, renovation and new building. Uh, and also include infrastructure projects such as railways, bridges, and roads that will be built up to seven years in the future. Uh, now, when you click on every single one of those pins that you see on the map, 
there will be a pop-up which actually shows you more inf information about each single project. So you will find the details about this construction project. You will find all of the contact details of the people in charge of the project. Um, and you will also see the estimates of the amounts of all large categories of materials that will result from, the, from each building project. Uh, then step number two is basically a dashboard where um, you basically see more details about all of the materials. You can see the quality reports of the materials if such are available. Uh, you also see the CO2 emission estimates that you would be saving if you reused uh, this particular amount of, uh, of uh, every single material versus producing new material. Um, and then... Uh, also, obviously, we have partner companies that offer logistics services, that offer storage services, storage facilities for every single construction project that you also see on the dashboard there. Um, and the most important part, I guess, uh, I would say is the marketplace that we have built on top of the database so that um, this is the place where we want to connect the buyers and the sellers to uh, buy or sell their surplus materials even ahead of the construction process, uh, even years ahead of the construction process being started. Um, so this is important because we want to give you access to the materials before those materials have actually resulted uh, into the free market. So you can pre-order uh, ahead of time before you even demolish the building. Um, this is a closer look basically to the same screen with the pin. So uh, here again, every single pin, every single color uh, represents a different construction project, where, whether it's a demolition, renovation, or a new building. Um, uh, here you see what happens when you click on the pin. So basically you see the company uh, that is in charge of the building project. Uh, you see more details about the materials that are advertised as available from every single project. And uh, you see also the contact details of uh, everybody in charge of uh, the project. Um, here is another um, look of the platform. This case is for Finland. So as already mentioned, um, this is the platform that basically helps material uh, producers, material ma uh, manufacturers to access bulk materials at scale for their uh, production facilities. So uh, here we go more into cost savings. So if you were to reuse an X amount of concrete in producing new cement, then you see uh, basically the comparisons with the market price. And you also see the CO2 savings from reusing already pre-existing material versus using uh, virgin material. Um, and also, of course, we have trend graphs here that show you basically how, how would the cost savings and the CO2 savings look over a period of time and how the market price has fluctuated over the time uh, of your production. Um, and here we have the marketplace. So basically, uh, you can advertise whatever materials you have planned to, uh, or whatever materials you know that in the next few years will become available for reuse. Um, you can use also the filter section where you basically set uh, the standards and the quality standards and the amounts of uh, whether it's concrete, crushed, uh, crushed concrete or glass or steel uh, structures that you're looking for. Uh, you can look for aggregates, you can look for uh, soil as, as well. So uh, there's, a, there's a large variety of uh, advertised materials here. And uh, basically the benefits here are that um, we do believe that we have built a platform that is um, solving a problem at a larger scale uh, than just like having a marketplace online where you, where you advertise uh, some materials uh, at, at lower scale that don't really solve any issue. So what we wanted to achieve with our platform, uh, starting with Norway and then implementing it in Finland as well, was to not only offer money savings in producing new material or uh, taking material from one building and using it in another building to uh, basically provide environmental benefits, but uh, we wanted to, to show that uh, basically reuse is not, not only a green issue or it's not, the, it's not a sustainability question anymore, but 
it solves a larger problem. It, it provides money savings. It also uh, helps you with dependence on the raw material availability because, as we all know, we're running out of uh, running out of raw materials. We're running out of minerals globally. It's an issue. Uh, the energy prices are only going up in the recent years. So basically, we know that with what we have built as the skeleton here, we can constantly iterate it and we can adapt it to new countries, whether it's Norway, whether it's Finland, or whether it's uh, potentially Ukraine as well. Um, so it's time to take action and uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for hearing me today. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Eva. So uh, do we have some questions? Uh, you can feel uh, free to write those questions in the chat or give a voice. But I have a question to Eva. Uh, so what is the main uh, challenge of scalability uh, of your business for going for new countries? Uh, it's more focused on the legal issues or it's mm -hmm. a cultural question. What, what is this challenge to get, get into the new countries uh, with your platform? Um, well, first of all, it's a very data heavy platform. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a very data heavy platform. Uh, so basically, um, in order for us to enter a new country, first of all, we need to access all the data about the plant construction projects, demolition projects and renovation projects. And um, the data, the, the way it's stored in municipality is very different from country to country. So there's no one quick solution for that. So that would be number one. Um, number two is obviously the legislation, as you mentioned already, League. Uh, as we all know, we have the EU Green Deal and we have great ambitions to be, to be CO2 neutral by 2050, but how is that going to be implemented in reality is another question that I have. Uh, so for that reason, uh, beyond these idealistic views of having a perfectly sustainable world, what we're doing with the platform is that we're adapting it uh, to exact needs of the actual market as it is today. So um, before we have legislation that basically fines you for trashing the planet, um, we need to find some, uh, some steps that we can actually take before that happens. And that is almost always, always an economic need coming from our customers, coming from the city planners, from the municipalities, from the property developers, and in the case of Finland, also material producers. So if we can show them that by reusing, they can save money, uh, then that's where the business is. And that's how we move forward with the platform. Okay, so I uh, have additional question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm a private person who is willing to also provide some kind of construction materials in small volume, mm -hmm. uh, can I use your platform? You can use the platform, yes, uh, of course. Uh, so we, we allow input from, from the users as well. We have user-generated content. Um, however, like what we have been focusing in the last three years now is uh, providing value for for large uh, either like I mentioned large producers and manufacturers who are looking for materials at bulk um, so if you're a private person then well I'm not sure how much value you would get out of the platform because what we're trying to connect is is, is the big guys is the big construction companies municipalities and uh, and uh, producers uh, material producers Okay, thank you. And you know, we, we have two questions uh, coming here. Mm -hmm. So the first question is from uh, Oksana. Uh, there's an argument that the reuse of construction waste is more expensive than raw materials. How will you comment here? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. That's a great question. And that's one of the main reasons why um, it's a problem globally, right? Because that's uh, that's a conception. Well, it's it's not it's not wrong and it's not right. I would say that would be my first answer because um, it depends what you want to do with the reusable materials, right? Like uh, if you're if you're going to take a concrete panel that has been in an old building and hope to, to reuse it as it is into a new building, then you're gonna run into problems. Because if there's cracks and if it's the main construction of the building, then, well, what, what if it breaks, right? Like, what if it comes crashing down? Um, however, there are a lot of great examples, like, uh, for instance, Landager Group uh, is one. It's an architect bureau in Denmark who have been very, very successful um, in terms of reusing materials as is from old buildings into new buildings. So that's one. 
Um, and another another one, like if you're worried about the quality control and reusing uh, materials from one building into another, like without running all the qu uh, quality tests, then um, what you can definitely do is to reuse the materials in production uh, or an infrastructure project. So one, one thing where, uh, let's say, concrete, crushed concrete is really... Uh, widely reused globally is under the asphalt. Like you just take uh, old concrete blocks, you crush them down, you put them as the as the base layer under asphalt, under roads, basically. Um, and the other uh, thing you can do is uh, working with manufacturers, just providing manufacturers with everything they need for producing new material. And actually, uh, the question: What is expensive? Because if we mm -hmm. will run out from uh, raw materials in <laughs> exactly. upcoming fifty years, then uh, I think uh, everything what is waste mm -hmm. today will be uh, more uh, valuable than you're going than to we be running it. after your old materials. Exactly that. And uh, a good question, a good answer. Uh, again, you just reminded me of something else here is that uh, many people don't know that the, the tallest building in the world, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, was built entirely using imported sand from Australia. Okay, so basically the desert is running out of sand. The desert is running out of sand. Like if you could imagine that, they, they brought all of the sand for, for making concrete for Burj Khalifa all the way from Australia. And the reason being is that they uh, wasted their own potential by building the fake palm island in Dubai uh, by digging up all the marine sand that could have been used uh, in concrete production. So, yeah, it's it's an issue. We're running out. We're running out yeah, of uh, materials. Surprisingly, uh, but yes, we are running out, and we but we are not running out from the questions. <laughs> so we have one more question. I, I will read it. My name is uh, Tatiana Demchenko. I am project manager from company BDO. One of our partners plans to invest in construction waste processing plant waste from Russian attacks on destroyed buildings. He plans to invest part of the funds from his own, and he wants to raise part of it as grant funding. What program can you recommend to him? Mm, is that a question about uh, grant where to get money? Uh, yes. Yeah, where to get money for uh, developing uh, waste, uh, waste plan uh, for construction materials? One is private fund, but is there some kind of programs where you can attract money for, I don't know, European Union funded programs or of whatever, whatever funds? Um, I, I, I'm probably not going to be the best person to answer this because these grant programs are constantly changing and updating. And uh, what you can look into is probably Horizon 2020, I think it was called, which is uh, one of the largest European uh, grant programs that uh, runs, I think, three times a year. Uh, so yeah, Horizon 2020, that's one of the largest uh, European grant programs that you can apply for. Um, other than that, like I, I, I guess I'm not super updated on this. I would say maybe talk to material producers, talk to large multinationals that are interested in, in reusables and that might be interested in funding this. So that would be the other uh, the corporate way to go unless you want to focus solely on grant projects. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Eva, uh, for, for, for your presentation. Uh, I can a little bit add my uh, know-how about the grant programs, as this is more investment projects and, uh, and less research projects, and there could be option to look opportunities in World Bank. Uh, there's different type of grant programs and different kind of supportive programs for Ukraine and reconstruction of Ukraine. And also there's additional European uh, Development Bank, if I'm not mistaken, but I had uh, the official name. Reconstruction Development Bank, yes. So there's also a different type of grant and supportive programs for uh, for these type of actions. Because um, these type of projects, they are more looking for funds and less for research or whatever training or experiential activities. So it could be more like in um, financial tools which supports reconstruction of Ukraine. And of course, um, yes, uh, thank you, Yeva. Uh, so, uh, one more, uh, uh, step by step, uh, I would like to say that actually mm, uh, the case with those investment activities are focused on that, that um, mm, 
uh, there are two type of supports for uh, reconstruction of Ukraine. Uh, one type of support when there's non non financial activities. Also, like today we have this webinar which supports uh, small and medium enterprises and business support organizations and public organizations with know how, with best practice, with everything. Another uh, support for uh, for rec reconstruction of Ukraine is financial tools, and this type of financial tools should be looked more in financial organizations, and there you can look for investment programs for uh, for construction programs and these kind of things but of course uh, uh, all these type of uh, tools also are um, there are quite a lot are on planning process so you should be on uh, up to date all the day uh, all the time because what you don't have it today might arise after tomorrow or after tomorrow so mm, please follow the information and also this uh, project Latvia 2 also plans to, to provide guidelines about these funds and uh, and European funded programs where uh, small and medium enterprises can look for support, business support organizations can look for support and uh, public organizations as well. So, and uh, now I would like to introduce our next speaker, uh, Kristaps Pulinc uh, from Orca Latvia, Sustainability Manager. And uh, Kristaps will speak about topic Orca Latvia Sustainability Strategy and an examples of good practice. So, the floor is yours. Thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, so yes, I will tell about Orko Latvia sustainability strategy and, and uh, some practical examples how we have uh, implemented it. Uh, Orko Latvia is part of uh, Norwegian uh, company Orko. Orko is leading uh, industrial uh, uh, investment company. Uh, its scope of activity is uh, brands and uh, consumer oriented uh, companies, mainly in uh, Nordics, Baltics, uh, Central Europe. Uh, Orkl owns uh, 300 uh, brands uh, and, and employs uh, more than uh, 20,000 employees in, in uh, more than 100 factories. And uh, turnover of, uh, in, in 2022 was uh, around 5 billion euro. Uh, Orkl Latvi owns uh, one of the uh, biggest confectionery and snacks uh, brands in Latvia. Uh, those are uh, Laima, Selga, Adajo Chips, uh, Staburadze and uh, biggest condiments uh, and beverages uh, brands uh, like uh, Spilva and Gutta. Uh, we produce more than 1000 products uh, in four uh, factories uh, in Riga and uh, near Riga. Uh, about Orko Latvia's sustainability strategy. In uh, 2017, uh, Orko Latvia has prepared a um, sustainability strategy uh, and have set uh, targets for uh, 2025. Uh, the strategy has been uh, split into five uh, pillars, uh, environmental engagement, uh, sustainable sourcing, uh, nutrition and wellness, safe products and care for people and society. Uh, environmental engagement, it's all about CO2 emissions, like 65% uh, reduction of CO2 from own uh, operations so, and 30% uh, reduction of uh, CO2 in, in, in whole uh, value chain, uh, reduction of uh, water consumption and, and food waste. Uh, sustainable sourcing uh, means to ensure respect for workers' rights uh, in whole value chain and uh, sustainable uh, agriculture, sustainable uh, fishing, uh, and also using, uh, it means using recyclable and, uh, recyclable and uh, recycled packaging. Uh, nutrition and wellness, uh, it uh, promotes uh, consumption of healthier products uh, and uh, reduce uh, salt. Uh, we have set target uh, to, to reduce uh, salt and sugar in our uh, products by 15 uh, percent. Mm. Safe products, uh, it's uh, to ensure factories with no major food uh, cases, uh, 100 uh, percent approved uh, suppliers ac uh, according to our criteria. Uh, care for uh, people and society, it's 100% compliance uh, with Oracle human rights 
policy, zero injuries in, in factories, uh, ensure that uh, there are uh, women uh, uh, half of our uh, leadership positions and, and create strong local engagement of uh, sustainability. Uh, that's about theory and uh, uh, about uh, the strategy. And uh, now a bit uh, more about uh, practical examples, how we have uh, uh, executing our uh, strategy. Uh, each year we in invest in uh, not only in the production facilities and uh, innovations, uh, but also we are um, uh, upgrading our processes in order uh, to reduce impact on uh, environment. For example, in uh, Adaju Chips uh, factory, we have installed new and effective wastewater treatment uh, facilities, uh, hydrocyclone that uh, collects uh, potato starch. Uh, we have renewed uh, ventilation system in potato warehouse and uh, this all together allow allowed us uh, to reduce CO2 emissions by 23% in, in that factory. Uh, we have also installed a uh, solar park uh, near to uh, Spilva factory. Uh, that uh, uh, it was in the very, uh, very end of the last year. And as we are calculating, uh, those solar panels will produce around 17% uh, uh, of uh, uh, yearly energy that is needed for the factory. Uh, solar panels are uh, installed uh, on the roof of uh, Lima chocolate factory as well. And uh, basically for all factories, Orker Latvi is uh, buying guarantees of uh, green energy. So we are assuring that 100% of the electricity is so-called uh, green uh, in our uh, all production facilities. And um, especially I want to highlight our new Lima factory building uh, that we have opened in uh, mid of uh, 2021. Uh, now we have uh, made calculations and calculated that uh, this new energy effective uh, factory uh, allowed us to reduce uh, CO2 emissions by uh, 50% compared to the old factory that was located in the uh, center of Riga. Uh, goal, uh, the goal to, to use sustainable sourcing in production means uh, intensive work with uh, our suppliers, uh, with our suppliers of uh, raw materials uh, as well with suppliers of uh, packaging materials. Mm. Every day we are searching for uh, better, healthier and uh, more nature-friendly solutions. Uh, uh, Extensive work uh, has been done uh, in order to implement Rainforest Alliance uh, uh, certified cacao uh, in all chocolate products uh, under uh, Lima uh, brand. We started uh, back in uh, 2021 and uh, basically just, just now the last products are, are made of certified cacao. It was a uh, huge work there. Uh, Starting uh, with uh, 2021, uh, we are using certified tomatoes uh, in, in all our uh, Spilva uh, tomato products. And uh, what concerns packaging, it is almost our um, everyday's work to uh, test different types of uh, packaging materials. And the uh, main challenge here is to get such, uh, such packaging uh, material uh, that is uh, sustainable, uh, meaning recyclable or uh, made from uh, recycled ingredients. And in the same time that uh, uh, does not uh, create uh, negative impact on, on, on uh, uh, shelf life of our products. Uh, here is a um, sample of um, packaging for our uh, Gutta uh, juices and uh, drinks. Uh, it is made of 84% of renewable raw materials. Uh, there is also plastic packaging for Selga biscuits that is made of mono material. So it is recyclable as, as, as well if it's uh, correctly sorted. Uh, 
taking into account that we are food producing uh, company, uh, the most uh, work is exactly in, in nutrition and wellness uh, field. Uh, big success uh, we have in uh, chips production. Uh, four years ago we have switched to chips cooking from uh, palm oil to uh, sunflower oil. That allowed us to reduce uh, saturated uh, fats in the product uh, by four times. Mm, during the last uh, three, four years uh, we have worked hard uh, to get rid of uh, artificial uh, taste enhancers. Uh, and, and uh, proudly I can uh, tell that uh, all other chips products, it means uh, regular chips, uh, extruded products, uh, pellets and nuts, all are without artificial taste enhancers. Uh, uh, during these years we have gradually r uh, reduced uh, salt level in, in chips products. Uh, we have reduced uh, uh, salt in our uh, regular assortment products and uh, as well as introduced new product uh, line called uh, less salt chips and uh, those chips are, are uh, coming with 30% uh, uh, less salt than average in, in the market. Uh, in total we have reduced uh, average salt level by 16% com uh, compared to 2017. We have, all, uh, we have worked uh, with other categories as well. Uh, for example, uh, our uh, uh, biscuits are now uh, without uh, palm oil and uh, we have uh, reduced uh, sugar level in, in, in those uh, selga biscuits. Recently uh, there have been introduced new uh, selga crisp breads uh, that are rich with uh, sunflower and flax seeds. Uh, oat flakes and then they are rich uh, 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 with fiber. So it's uh, some healthier snack. Of course uh, as food producer uh, safe products are uh, as much important as tasty products. Uh, as safe products uh, we understand not only uh, from food safety aspect uh, but also we need to assure that uh, there is safe working environment in our, uh, for our uh, employees. Mm. There has been uh, implemented uh, automated and robotized solutions in order to make uh, work easier, uh, especially uh, for, for those that are uh, working uh, physically, uh, physical work. Uh, for example, uh, uh, palletizing machine uh, in, in chips factory. Uh, and there, uh, uh, in the same time, uh, uh, these solutions makes uh, production process uh, more effective. Uh, regularly, we are uh, working in uh, on different uh, certifications like uh, ISO, BRC, uh, and and uh, Oracle Food Safety uh, uh, certifications and uh, others. Uh, in parallel of uh, very uh, practical goals, we should remember that company needs to work as a social responsible organization as well. Mm, uh, already for a long time Oracle Latvia is uh, supporting uh, local communities, uh, events and uh, other initiatives that are uh, actual for uh, our society. We are uh, uh, paying attention to those activities related to a uh, healthy lifestyle. Uh, and then some different uh, local sport events. Also, Orco Latvia is uh, supporting their employees. Uh, we have a team uh, uh, in, in Riga Marathon event, for example. And uh, uh, finally, we are uh, very proud of uh, our uh, uh, charity project, uh, Lima Charity House. Uh, last year it was uh, happening already uh, 12th year. Uh, during this project we are helping children from uh, low-income families. Uh, each year there are uh, involved around 1000-1200 uh, uh, families uh, that we are helping with uh, Christmas gift gifts. And uh, at the very end uh, I would say with, with uh, Johann Zeitz words, sustainability is no longer about doing uh, less harm, it's about doing more good. Thank you.
for your presentation uh, or uh, participants of webinar are invited again to provide those questions uh, if they are uh, but I have a question um, uh, for me this presentation was very inspirational as uh, it was really like visible that sustainability it's not only about waste management it's much much wider topics starting with raw materials with pro um, packaging with uh, producing processes these kind of things but when and why uh, this journey started in North Latvia because I remember then when it was 2016 and 17 and we in Chamber started a new project called Circle OPP about circular economy everybody asked me what is circular economy and why we need to take interest about it and now uh, it's 2024 and you have this marvelous presentation about Orca Latvia about all the great things what we already have done so when this journey to start and how it started uh, it started uh, qu quite long time ago in, in 2015 uh, in in uh, Orkla, Orkla group in Norway and uh, they uh, at, uh, at that time they they uh, made uh, this this uh, sustainability strategy based on United Nations uh, targets and uh, at that time it was topic and 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 uh, uh, we found that that uh, Orkla needs to be one of uh, sustainability leaders in 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 markets where uh, it is uh, represented uh, and and uh, then we made uh, made this uh, this strat strategy and then we are going forward to implement it till 2025 okay so it's actually technically short maybe a little bit longer journey but still a lot of things already have done and it shows a good example uh when um, when you have a aim you can go for that and you can achieve th something. Okay, thank you very much, Krista. And step by step, we are uh, forwarding to the next uh, and, and, and uh, last speaker of today. Uh, this will be also a very interesting story about circular economy because I remember when there was a story about that, um, as I mentioned already, 2017, I started this journey about uh, Project Circle PP, about circular economy in Latvia, and we tried to pilot some kind of uh, circle of procurement. So it's actually next uh, challenge to to put circular economy not only on 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 our daily lives, but really in the procurement. So I recognize that there is a lot of uh, uh, challenges in society in general, in business, and general in policy making about uh, uh, what it is and how to implement it. In our daily lives and how to uh, move in wider scale not from household when I remember when my ki uh, my granny took uh, a sauce cream glass plastic glass and put there a plant of tomato for growing it up uh, in a big area so this is also part of circle economy but uh, but now uh, policy makers and European Union has decided to make it in wider scale to save uh, save our raw materials to save our nature to save our world and make uh, our economy uh, really much sustainable and much greener so actually I would encourage to every uh, small and medium enterprise uh, in Ukraine and also every uh, small and medium um, you know, whatever company organization uh, business support organizations really think about these topics and go into these topics much deeper because as you recognize today I give a questions about uh, when you started this journey so 2015 16 and 17 nobody spoke about that but uh, or understand that and now we are in 2024 and we have already four great uh, examples about really great job done about sustainability and circularity in or organizations. So, and now I'm giving the word to Mr. Ivar, Sh Ivar Schmitz, Executive Director from Lindstrom, Latvia, and he is going to speak about implementation of circular economy uh, principles in Lindstrom, Latvia. So, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, dear Ukrainian entrepreneurs. Um, first of all, I should say that uh, my true belief is that circular economy uh, reuse of materials is our really only practical way how to deal with uh, overconsumption of resources on our planet and uh, that's why I was uh, really glad that I have the possibility three and a half years ago to join the Lindstrom organization uh, who is embedded uh, in their values and also practical activities uh, circularity principles not for 
five years, not for 10 years, but already for several decades. Um, companies uh, represented in 23 countries, inclu including Ukraine. Therefore, I think it will be even more interesting for you um, to learn about our our uh, approaches, uh, which I will now be sharing with you today. Uh, and uh, many of those approaches we are also applying not only in, in Latvia or other countries, but also in uh, Ukraine. So the company Lindstrom is offering uh, textile rental services. So meaning that the uh, rental of textiles and rental of things is uh, in general already one of the circularity based models because the core idea is to when renting things renting textile like workwear or uh, we are renting also um, changeable mats those ones which you have near uh, entrances uh, of, of the buildings uh, when you rent those things then you can use them longer there can be several users for the same uh, piece and if they are maintained and repaired properly they can last for three four or even sometimes we have some workwear pieces which last eight or nine years uh, so therefore we can say that the sustainability sustainability or circular economy principles is is really dna of our company of our business uh, and uh, companies operating already 175 years and uh, my understanding is that already for 70 or 80 years uh, company acts in in circular ways um, that i will also share with you today uh, yes as i mentioned company was established 175 years ago and the textile renting it, it first, first first of all it was laundry in finland uh, so small laundry which has developed to textile renting uh, starting from 1930s and uh, uh, those uh, services yes i already mentioned it is workwear those are uh, rental mats and it's also bed linen for hotels and hospitals so everything what needs to be washed repaired and can be uh, used several uh, times um mat rental business uh, the company entered in 1970s and uh, basically up till uh 1995 company was operating only in uh, finland but in 1995 they expanded and uh, made first uh, daughter company in the, in one of the closest uh, uh, neighboring countries estonia and since that time companies uh, operating in already 24 countries all around the globe um, if uh, looking at our goals then uh, they are quite simple determination to become better uh, to become uh, better as employees better as as company better partner for the our, our customers and also a uh, better part of, of, of the society in the countries where we are uh, operating. Then uh, caring for our planet and later I will share with you how in practical ways we really uh, decrease our um, influence on the planet in the business which is quite much based on washing and using also chemicals in the washing process but still we we can uh, minimize this impact uh, to the minimum as much as possible. Yes, uh, being best partner for our customers that I already mentioned and uh, becoming stronger and becoming stronger means that uh, bringing more value to the customers and that's uh, that's the way also how we can uh, be strong and be profitable and invest in our uh, further development of the company. Um, yes, uh, so probably very important things to act in a sustainable way and and also to act in according to uh, in accordance to circular economy principles is to define uh, and embed that into the purpose and the mission of the company and our purpose is uh, care for people and the planet and inspire people to shine and businesses to grow in sustainable way so this is the purpose of our company and here you see that we are not aiming only ourselves to be sustainable but we see ourselves that we are also providing services which help our customers to be more sustainable and uh, uh, minimize use of um, materials and resources 
as much as possible. And our mission is uh, uh, that we are a textile service company focused on making our customers' lives easier. So every day we strengthen the image uh, of our customers because as part of our uh, services is also workwear. So means that uh, our uh, customer employees are actually wearing our, uh, our workwear and that's how they are uh, showing and improving image of the company as well as that's the way how they are acting in a secure way and as we are uh, offering uh, workwear in accordance to different industry needs and, and really taking care for um, work safety um, in parallel. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the mm, probably important things if we talk about the workwear uh, is first of all to produce the workwear which is durable, it's easy repairable and lasts long, this is one thing. And the other thing is that uh, to produce workwear exactly in the needed quantities. And uh, for several decades Lindstrom was uh, purchasing uh, workwear in, uh, in, in China, in Madagascar, and um, in those countries, if you want to buy some piece of workwear, for example, pants, uh, the minimum quantity you can buy is uh, 600. And of course, uh, thinking about especially such countries as Baltics, uh, we don't have so many such big customers who need so many uh, pieces of workwear. Uh, sometimes we need 100 or 200, therefore uh, five years ago Lindstrom decided to, um, to build own uh, production uh, company. Uh, now we have three such, first one was built in, uh, in Latvia in uh, city Tukums, the next one afterwards was built in Hungary and third one was built in India. And uh, as, as you see from, from this uh, name of the company, Lindstrom Prodem, so Prodem means production on demand. In that company, uh, we have um, uh, 150 uh, sewers who are working and producing workwear. Uh, the processes are 60% automatized, robotized, and we are able uh, to produce also two pieces of uh, workwear or five pieces or also 200 pieces. So we produce exactly uh, as much as customer has ordered us. So we are not uh, frozen our uh, financial resources and also textile as material resources in, in unused workwear somewhere in the stocks because if we would buying like 600 pieces of workwear from China and using out of those only 200 means that 400 are staying somewhere in the uh, warehouse and probably will never be used. So we are uh, able to produce exactly as much as customer has ordered and if customer orders additional pair of pants so we can produce it in, uh, in two, three days and uh, and uh, deliver uh, in um, Northern Europe as Tukums is, um, is taking care of, of workwear production for the new Northern Europe region. So this is one of the parts also how we act in sustainable way and try to use as, as less materials as possible, uh, producing exactly as much as uh, his customer has ordered. Okay. Um, if we look at this all textile uh, renting uh, from the customer perspective, uh, it is really a carefree option for the customer. Customer don't need to think anymore about the purchase of workwear or design of the workwear, and don't need to buy washing machines uh, and or, or, or to ask their employees to bring home their workwear and wash themselves. We are taking care of all that process, so uh, we already have uh, pre-designed standard collections of work where it is possible also to design own collections according to customer needs but then in this design process our designers take care that those the workwear is designed in a way that it is really durable lo uh, lasts long as well as it is easy repairable so this is one of the important aspects of uh, circular economy that the things which are produced are easily re easily repairable so we can repair and prolong lifetime of those um, uh, goods, in this case uh, workwear and textile. 
Um, yes, we take care of laundry and maintenance. So basically, we are uh, taking care of regular washing of the of the workwear, and uh, then we are adjusting also our washing. Uh, cycles to the specific needs of industry. For example, if we talk about some uh, wood production where pr employees need to change work where, uh, for example, once a week, it means that they have uh, three sets of work where one set of work where they are wearing, the other one they are having in their locker, uh, which is uh, ready for use uh, and, and clean and waiting the change. And the third set we are washing in our laundry. And that's the way how uh, um, once in a week we, we our, our driver comes, change the sets of workwear for all the employees of our customers, and they always have the um, clean garments. And th then if we talk about, uh, for example, food industry, then in food industry where employees need to change their uh, workwear uh, every every uh, working day, so means they need 11 sets of workwear, five sets uh, they they are having in, uh, in, in, in their locker, one set they are wearing, and five sets we are washing in our laundry. So from one perspective, it sounds like a lot, 11 sets of work where pr from other perspective, uh, we are renting it. And if we have those 11 sets, they are properly changed every week, properly repaired. They can last three and more years, uh, can be in, in, in use. And uh, it means again that the material the textile which is used in, in, in this work where is used as, as long as possible. And of course we take care of deliveries and pickups uh, of, of the of the work where for our customers. We take care also of, of the storage and what is very important we take care also of recycling. Now already for uh, two years all work where which is uh, sort of end of lifetime work where which has been used by our customers um, it is recycled in, in Finland with our partner Rester. And uh, so all, f all work we're used in Finland and Baltics is uh, recycled. And what is very important, it is recycled in a, in, in a manner that, that the value of material uh, is kept the same. So basically uh, the used workwear is uh, recycled to the uh, level of, uh, of um, fibers from which again the new yarns and the new textile materials can be produced. So this is very important aspect of uh, circular economy to look for the ways of recycling uh, goods uh, to keep the material value. Um, yes, so this is if I would, would be only one slide which I would show you today, that would be this slide which shows this um, circular uh, circularity of our uh, workwear, uh, starting from uh, already what I did, described you, uh, production and design of the workwear, um, then uh, which is on on the left side, and then uh, on the right side, this is the service of the workwear uh, we, where we are taking care, as I already told, of of maintenance and washing of deliveries and also recycling. Uh, on uh, at, at the end uh, of, of the life cycle. Uh, so uh, again, repeating that on in during uh, in our production process, as we produce on demand, we are reducing our production, as I mentioned. And in during in our service process, we are conserving natural resources because we are taking care that that the work will lasts as long as possible. Um, so, uh, in order to develop further, our company has taken uh, certain uh, goals because in order to succeed uh, with our uh, saving our planet and, and, and the decreasing use of natural resources, we need to have measurable goals. And those goals which I'm showing you, those are uh, applicable to all Lindstrom group, inclu including uh, Ukraine as well. So uh, we are here comparing uh, uh, years 2030 and 2050 with year 2021. So means that um, by 2030, uh, we are aiming to decrease our emissions by 50% comparing to the ones which we had in 21. 
and uh, knowing that we are using also natural gas and uh, we are using quite a lot of electricity so this is quite a challenging task but we are aiming for that and uh, as yes for 2050 our goal is to be net zero to to eliminate co2 emissions to zero uh, other other part is uh, energy and electricity so where we are also planning to 2030 decrease our emissions by 50 percent and the third uh, third aspect is customer deliveries currently we have vans and trucks who which are delivering uh, and and collecting workwear and also mats from our customers and here also our goal is by 2030 to decrease emissions by 50 percent and by 2050 uh, going net zero. I would say that uh, currently we have probably more or less understanding how we practically will reach those 2030 goals, uh, but we don't have yet uh, uh, precisely understanding how we will reach 2050 goals because I think as in all industries on the world we are counting that uh, the technologies uh, will develop, that the recycling approaches and material reusage technologies will develop and it will help us also really to reach this 2050 net zero target. So this is really in, in cooperation between businesses, between scientists and accounting that uh, uh, hopefully all humanity, but at least Europe will really focus on uh, on, uh, on, on, uh, on developing technologies uh, to uh, work in sustainable uh, way and uh, minimize use of materials. So, and some very practical examples from Latvia. Last year we installed solar panels on, 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 uh, on the roof of our service center in Pinti. So, this is uh, 655 solar panels, uh, 2000 square meters. And uh, even though we are quite much up north, we are the first country in uh, in Lindstrom Group who has solar panel park so much up north in Europe, but we have uh, calculated that we will be able to produce one third of electricity, uh, which we are using annually, and it will help us to uh, uh, save on our expenses, electricity expenses, and depending on electricity price, it will improve our EBITDA around one 0.5%, so half percent of EBITDA actually on the company level we can improve uh, using the, those solar panels. And uh, yes, we've been also quite uh, happy that we've been able to attract uh, European Union uh, co-financing and one third of the project expenses were covered by uh, Altum Recovery Fund, basically uh, EU uh, money and funds which are which has been available now uh, for entrepreneurs in Latvia in the context of the Green Deal of uh, European Union. This is one example. Uh, yes, and as I already mentioned that we have this partner Rester, where also Lindstrom has become one of the shareholders in this company. So this is Finnish, used to be Finnish startup. Now, th now they are not startup anymore. And this is our partner who are recycling uh, Baltic and Finnish uh, textile at the end of textile life cycle, as I, as I mentioned, keeping material value. And um, then, then one challenge what we had also was recycling of our uh, reusable mats. Um, and uh, as you see here on the picture, then those mats consist of rubber. And then uh, on the rubber, uh, upper side is actually textile. And uh, the, the, the biggest challenge has been how to remove, when you have those mats used already and they need to be recycled, how to remove this textile from, those, uh, from the rubber. So that has been the main challenge. Uh, now we have found uh, partners in Europe and now there are also some, uh, some technologies developing also in Latvia and Lithuania. Uh, which will be able to to distract this uh, this um, textile from the rubber and currently we are already having those new mats which are coming into circulation uh, where are 75 percent of uh, recycled yarn uh, so uh, and um, 
and also uh, more uh, nature friendly rubber material so means that if you look at the under your uh, when you enter somewhere and look at the mat and if you see this uh, mat with Lindstrom logo and this recycling sign so means that those are those new uh, new material mats uh, so with mats we have uh, this solution and new 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 um, collections of mats recyclable mats are already entering our markets uh, well, it will take some five to seven years while the all mats are, are, are uh, changed to the, those recycled ones. And currently we are also looking for, as I mentioned, for technologies. I hope that this year we'll be able to find solutions uh, how to recycle mats in a way to keep this uh, uh, material value. Currently we are uh, incinerating mats or burning them uh, and, and uh, selling to our partners and they are burning and producing at least heat from those mats, but that's not the best way of recycling as the material is using its, uh, its value during the burning process. Uh, yes, and this is our uh, colleague Kaspars Grava. He is from Latvia, but works for the head office, and and he is service owner of the mat uh, service. And the goal uh, was to find materials and production methods that ensure that the products and quality remain the same uh, when we are using those recycled materials. And it has been a challenge, and still is a challenge. Also, that yes, there are technologies how to recycle materials, but in many cases, it is still the situation that when you get this. Uh, recycled material as a resource afterwards when you produce goods from that they are not so durable at the moment yet as if they would be used uh, produced from uh, brand new materials so yes Kaspers is working on that on the group level to secure that our mats which are also produced from recyclable materials are as durable as uh, those ones which are produced from uh, uh, original new materials and uh, yes and then one more side of our business is uh, use of water and as you can imagine then in laundry we have a lot of washing machines where we wash uh, workwear and where we wash also uh, mats and we there are ways how to reuse water itself and how to reuse uh, heat of the dirty water and just shortly that yes uh, during the washing process you can imagine that when we are washing for example workwear we are uh, rinsing it in uh, several cycles sometimes it's up to three cycles and uh, then the in this last cycle this uh, this used water is more or less clean already so we are reusing this uh, water of the last uh, rinsing cycle to uh, rinse uh, and wash already dirty garments in their first washing cycle so that's how we are reusing water other thing is that we are also uh, using heat of the dirty water uh, after uh, washing in the washing machine um, our this dirty water which comes out of the washing machines is from 50 up to 70 degrees uh, centigrade uh, hot and we are using this dirty hot water to um, to warm up uh, fresh cold water which we buy from municipality and uh, we are able to uh, to warm this water by almost 20 degrees uh, using uh, using those um, heat exchange um, uh, technologies so we we are warming it up from 7.9 to 28.3 uh, degrees centigrade and again uh, by using these recuperation systems we are uh, saving saving the energy used for uh, heating the water and this is I think very good example that uh, sustainability is not always based only in some modern technologies like I previously mentioned uh, solar panels which is still relatively new technology such water or air recuperation systems are, are known to humanity already for decades and those systems can be used very well in 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 an acting in sustainable way you just need to think and be creative yourself how to apply them in your concrete industry and then the last thing that we are also using uh, we need to clean the water before we 
uh, supply this dirty water back to the municipality um, mm, water collection system and then in this purification process we use some part of the uh, dirty uh, water as well and our goal is now we are investing in new uh, wastewater cleaning uh, technologies which will be launched in uh, spring of 25 so in pinch laundry we are investing in those ones and and there our goal is that uh, after uh, after launching those new uh, wastewater cleaning uh, technologies we will be able to reuse 60 percent of the water in the washing process so we will be then buying uh, from municipality on only 40 percent of, of of fresh water and again will decrease our uh, use of uh, natural resources and also our, our um, mm, sort of footprint in, in in ecological footprint will improve well in a way we don't have issues with water availability in latvia but still cleaning the water and uh, and uh, cleaning the water still takes resources and in, in investments and that's the way how we can save and yes uh, so already what we show to our customers i think it's very important to show that sustainable ways of uh, um, working is also measurable otherwise it's only sometimes talking and talking but it needs to be measurable so you can show and understand yourself as well as prove to your customers uh, that uh, using our services is really uh, helping them also to act in more sustainable and green way and here is the calculator which you can find in basically in all uh, web pages on of our companies uh, and here is industrial washing which is offered by our company compared to home washing because there are customers uh, who are using uh, workwear in their daily activities and still uh, their employees are bringing uh, home and washing home uh, at home their uh, work where or there are some companies who have own washing machines and here we are comparing how industrial washing is saving water uh, how it is uh, saving detergents because we are using detergents depending on how dirty how soiled the the, the workwear is so more dirty work where we use more detergents for um, uh, less dirty work where we use less de detergents so we're using more more precisely detergents and we have around 40 different uh, washing programs which are then um, then applied based on different industries for food industry you need one type of uh, detergents used for other industries the other ones and then we also show how we uh, how we save energy and how we decrease our carbon footprint and also as I mentioned already that as we take care of textile textile waste how much uh, uh, how much of textile waste every year basically we are uh, um, recycling and also saving and this is uh, as, as you see on the bottom of the page this is a saving per year uh if the customer have five pieces of workwear if we would move this ruler to some two thousand pieces of workwear so then of course this influence will be much higher and this is really the way how we uh can uh, can show the customers the benefits and there are more and more companies uh both international as well as local now who are looking for the partners who can provide uh not only high quality but also sustainable services and for more and more customers this uh, co2 and other f decreases of uh, of uh, footprint are, are very important when they uh, make decisions about choosing the service provider yes so uh, that is a lindstrom story thank you and uh, I don't know, probably some questions. Yeah, thank you, Ivars. Uh, this was a really interesting presentation, especially that uh, if you, uh, a company from Ukraine is willing uh, to step first, step for being sustainable, they say should be a Lindstrom client, because if they are your clients, then they are the automatically already giving some sustainable impact. But uh, uh, yes, today it was very interesting that uh, based on this uh, Ivars presentation, we faced at least uh, 
before we saw at least four business uh, circle business models what is uh, renting not buying uh, production on demand servicing and repairing and uh, waste materials as uh, can be used as, as raw materials for producing new products so I think this is a really uh, tips and tips uh, what you can take uh, to home with you we have once uh, interesting uh, question uh, like straightforward a question to the Lindstrom uh, company could you uh, could your company manufacture uniform for army forces as mm. well? Uh, the quick answer is no. Our Finnish colleagues have tried doing that, but the army uniforms are so complex pieces of textile uh, that uh, we don't have this uh, technology to produce and afterwards also wash and repair them. So Finnish colleagues have tried, but uh, not yet. Okay. Uh, let's hope that uh, demand for army uniforms uh, won't arise, but will decrease in future, and we will be in safe and sustainable mm -hmm. world. And uh, yes, and maybe my my question to you uh, is, uh, what is like um, so inspiration? Um, uh, inspiration sentence for the Ukrainian small and medium enterprises who have not started yet sustainable strategy in the company like a wish for them mm. uh, first of all my wish is to look what type of resources you are using uh, and what probably waste you are producing and then a bit analyze probably first of all when you choose resource providers then think uh, what could be more sustainable resources and if you think about your waste what you are producing in your process uh, then look a bit to which industries this waste could be as a resource and probably you can find very interesting uh, partners uh, who, who can actually in some cases even buy your waste as a resource and other thing I, uh, I really suggest that um, mm, to look at sustainability also as potential uh, resource how to de decrease your costs because those examples which I showed you today with solar panels with reuse of water with reuse of heat you can actually in acting in sustainable way in s in several cases even decrease your costs and uh, in in a such way act act in more profitable way work in more profitable way and also bring more value to your customers so a bit uh, look with uh, cautious and uh, open mind at your existing processes and and the use of resources so thank you Ivers uh, for your presentation as a summary I would like to say that uh, sustainable business approach is a smart business approach and I think this is the main approach uh, main main reason why uh, European Union is really going for uh, for this uh, policy so as far we don't have any more questions I would like to say thank you all participants of today's webinar uh, for being for with us in this topic for looking for future uh, uh, in sustainable way because uh, uh, knowing today all the requests of European uh, Green Deal and about European Union policy and sustainability will make your business sustainable uh, not only for environment but uh, also for economics in future because as I mentioned uh, some years ago nobody doesn't speak about that and nowadays it's a really like up-to-date topic for every si uh, single company who is willing to be uh, competitive in uh, business in future as well so uh, and then additionally at the end I would like to say also a huge thank you for Ukrainian Chamber of Commerce and Industry for uh, being a partners in Ukraine and uh, and working with Ukrainian companies at the uh, you can be here today with us. Our uh, webinar is uh, recorded, will be spread out after uh, this uh, webinar as well for every single interesting uh, to watch uh, later as well. So thank you very much for being us today and uh, have a sustainable ide ideas for future. Thank you. <laughs>